so yeah so we were looking at three different methods how we can basically once made some wrong edits on a table how we can restore it back using the time travel feature so one of them using the offset method we basically specify the number of seconds that we want or number of minutes that we want uh, to offset the results from on the table and thereby it will take us back to results of that table back at that particular specified offset uh, and we have also seen based on timestamp there was some error we will see about how to see and resolve that and there was we have also seen based on a query id you will get the query id from here and uh, you can just capture the query id where you made a wrong edit on the table and just ask please return the data of the table before this wrong uh, query was made so that was the uh, th those were the three approaches that we saw now let's quickly see the error that we faced here in time travel last time i was uh, telling you about the time zone so currently this particular uh, uh, you have to basically uh, what happens is uh, when you create a login into Snowflake session, the time zone is not uh, specified. For some reason, there there will be some confusion uh, based on the query that you write and the timestamp at which this will store uh, the cloud servers will read, etc. So because of that, you have to specify a uniform uh, time zone. Uh, so here, last time we didn't do this thing. So once we specify this thing, we can specify any time zone, but for the time being. Uh, I'm keeping it uh, UTC for simplification purposes. So once I specify that, now uh, what I can now do is I will have the, my table ready. So let me just, yeah, I have my table ready and currently it's all showing the right data. So now when the table is showing right data, I'll just capture my time, uh, timestamp. I'll take this timestamp, current timestamp based on the UTC. I will just store it here. Okay, and now I will make the wrong edits that I uh, not intended to make. So once this has been done, I can quickly see the results and I can see all the data has been updated. Now I can just uh, use this timestamp at which I know the table has the right data. And I can just use a simple select statement. Uh, please give me the result of this table before this particular timestamp. So now uh, this should be able to give me the right data. So I can see the, uh, I can get the right data. So this is how you can uh, resolve that error by setting up a timestamp for the session. Time zone for the station, session. So now uh, let's explore further, little, little bit more on the time travel feature. And today what we'll do is, so we have just understood what time travel feature is, but we'll see how we can use it. We'll take a couple of applications where we can use it to actually restore the tables. And there are some uh, best and worst practices that we can do here. We'll just have a glimpse of that. And there is something called as on drop feature. Uh, we'll also explore that. And there is something called as fail safe. So if you would notice all these three features in Snowflake are resembling to, or they are kind of uh, uh, enabling the uh, data protection feature. So uh, this is like three to four level of security that you can uh, have on your data. So no matter what happens on your data, you you, you can be sure that you can retrieve it and that there, thereby your data is protected uh, from any uh, mishaps. So today we'll uh, first let's try to understand, see the couple of applications of time travel feature and then we'll cover these two features. Um, so let's quickly uh, do our same exercise. We'll create a table and then wrongly edit that table intentionally. And then we'll see how uh, we can use time travel to restore the table. So I'll first create the table. I will load the uh, data into that table from a particular S3 location and I will do a select star. Now, let me wrongly edit a uh, couple of these fields. Let's say last name uh, 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 and the job. Let me edit this uh, wrongly. So I'll just convert all the last names to Tyson. And let's say I'll convert all the jobs to data analyst. Once that I'm done, I can quickly do and I can expect this is what I have done. Now, uh, obviously, we know the time travel feature. I can get that uh, uh, value, how the table was before a particular query ID, right? Now, there's a couple of things that we need to keep in mind here. Uh, so, so let's say I will just go to history, okay? And uh, if I scroll this little here, I can see these are the two wrong update statements that I've made. 
this is the first one where I changed Tyson, uh, and this is the last one where I made data analyst, right? So now let's say I copied the query ID for the last wrong edit that I've made. I'll just go here, I'll copy the query ID, and I will go to worksheets. And I will, I'm writing now a time travel statement, select the table before this particular query ID. Now I will run this and as I, as I expect, I can see here, my job name is changed. It, it is retrieved, but my last name was not retrieved. Let's say for example, you, uh, you didn't realize this the name was not corrected and you went ahead and created uh, retrieve the table based on this statement okay now let's see what happens we are recreating the same table using this particular select statement now what will happen is let me copy this query here as well yes okay now i will uh, replace the statement with this table now i will do a select still and as we expect we see that the job column uh, uh, corrects itself but the Tyson column the last name column will not correct itself okay okay so this is fine no problem now let me go back and go to the update statement where I'm doing the uh, Tyson uh, this is the update statement where I'm doing the last name update to Tyson I will copy this query code now and uh, query ID and let me do a similar process okay let me paste this query ID here copy this and uh, copy this query ID so that I'm hoping that it will the table should restore back to the place where even I before I made this even the first edit wrong edit so now if I try to run this code what it does is uh, it, it throws me an error so the reason here it simply throws the error is so uh, the table on which we made these two changes is no longer existent. It, it is there, but when, uh, when we first made this particular time travel feature, we are already creating and replacing the tables. That means that our previous table is dropped and there's a new table on the same name that was created. So whatever the data time travel uh, retention uh, storage that was there on the previous table, all that metadata will be lost. So that means on this table, currently there is no retention at all. There is no uh, this table has only data related to Tyson. It doesn't have any data related to the original last names uh, in the uh, data retention. So, th so this is a very, uh, so if at all we have to go with this approach, it will be, uh, we will be losing our data. So th what is the right approach here is normally you identify what is the first and last wrong edit and uh, go to the last uh, uh, first wrong edit and then uh, to do it accordingly. So here, instead of uh, uh, taking the last update query ID, just take the first update query ID here directly. Thereby, we will be able to get that data. Uh, now, once that is done, or else there is a another uh, uh, best practice that people normally refer to. So let me quickly redo this table and make the strong changes. So, okay, now currently both my last name and job are wrongly updated. Now, the best way to do tackle with this is instead of replacing the table, right? Instead of uh, replacing on the same name, you just create a backup, some some different table. Thereby, even if you wrongly edit, so you will your original table with the retention memory is already will all, will always be present, so that you can revert back to uh, when uh, whenever you. Uh, wherever you want on the first query ID. So this is a simple uh, technique, but very uh, 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 important technique. So this is uh, something on the, uh, uh, how do we restore tables based on time travel. Now let's try to quickly, based on this time travel feature only, there is something called as uh, data undrop. And uh, if you would not try to find undrop in any other SQL systems, you may not find it in most of them. 
so this is something uh, that is very much related to this time travel ability uh, let's say for the time being and as the name suggests it's pretty much similar it, uh, there is nothing much to explain uh, so we all know let me first create a simple table for this to demonstrate I have created a customer's table here and uh, let's say you mistakenly drop this particular table okay and you don't uh, intend to do that so in the first statement I'm just dropping the table simple statement drop table or table name and uh, if I try to execute it it will say the table is not existent and you can uh, since that this whatever the table that we have stored uh, it will automatically, uh, whenever we drop it, it will go into the retention storage. So the, because of that uh, 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 reason, we will be able to undo the table drop and just uh, call undrop table and uh, table will be restored. Uh, just like how we bring back from the cycle bin and we can now get the data. So now this is uh, simple, but uh, the other important aspect here is it doesn't only work for uh, tables it works to a very great extent uh, apart from tables so you can also do a entire schema so currently if you see in uh, in this particular we are in this database our first db within the public schema i can play with schema as level as well i can just drop the entire schema and if i try to query a table from that schema it will not uh, do that and if i i can just undo the dropping of the schema and i can uh, get the schema back and likewise, as you can expect, not only at a schema level, you can also do this at a, even at a database level. So you, you get the idea. So th those that is the quick uh, 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 undrop uh, ability. Now there is one important aspect. So if you would recall the previous uh, uh, technique which we are using, uh, what is the good method and bad method to restore tables using time travel feature. There is uh, one another uh, 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 way using the undrop abilities uh, to actually uh, create use a time travel feature. Let's say, let me first, uh, yeah. Just a second, I'm pending in the. So let's say uh, take for the time being whatever the table that we are seeing the customer's table same ex same example let's say a last name job etc etc and uh, I've made the wrong edits Tyson again and the same thing okay I've made the wrong edits now let's say for the time being you forgot and you still went with the wrong method instead of going to uh, retrieve the table before this first error was made, you just retrieve the table before this last error was made. That means this error will always be retained in your uh, table that you retrieve. So that so because of that, let me just uh, try to create this once again. Let me grab the query ID now for the uh, last error. and uh, replace the table okay so now the table has been replaced let me just do a uh, select star once again to see as expected my name was uh, retrieved but my job job was not retrieved so now once let's say once this has been made now i cannot retrieve back again because my table has been dropped and created right so uh, the the, uh, the data before uh, 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 the other error was lost right so here what we can do is uh, when we are creating and replacing we know that the table or previous table was dropped and it is recreated that means we and we just saw that whatever the table if it is dropped we can undrop it so for the same reason we can use the undrop feature here and if at all we have we have we are we, we did make a wrong uh, 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 method of time travel in that case we can use the undrop ability to correct it so that's what we will do here um, what i'll do is now i'll just try to 
uh, i know that previously there was a customer table that was dropped and then new table with the same name was created so i will try to retrieve that table that was dropped with the customer's name oh. once i run it it says that hey there's already existing customer's table what do you want me to do so that's why i can just rename this current existing table so that my whatever the table that comes from my recycle bin it can be uh, renamed oh, just a second okay it looks like uh, i just ran this query before the session and it is let me drop this so the idea is simple so you basically uh, uh, you are trying to uh, retrieve the table which was wrongly lost even in the time travel stage so now uh, if i try to do the undrop once again it will allow me to uh, successfully restore the table and uh, now i get the tyson and data analyst now here i can go back and uh, captured the first error where it was made uh, where both errors were made uh, and before that i can uh, just retrieve the data it's slightly confusing but uh, uh, just remember two things here uh, the time travel is the core feature and whatever the tables that get dropped either manually or with the create or replace statement uh, you should be able to undrop them uh, using the simple undrop statement so that is one uh, th that is the second data uh feature in the data protection under snowflake and there is a one more level of data protection under snowflake which is called uh fail safe i'll just give you a quick uh introduction to fail safe and uh, we will close the session for today uh but be before i go to snowflake uh, fail safe there are actually a couple of points related to retention storage so so far what we have seen is so we see on the left hand side the data is actually stored in databases so this is your first level of storage so where you can directly access the data using select star statements now once the data has been dropped from here you can expect this data whatever has been dropped it will go to retention storage now for you to get the data from the retention storage you'll have to do a time travel statements and then get it get it back right so now only thing as i previously mentioned this time travel uh, ability is restricted to various types of licenses the basic license will have uh, uh, which is the standard edition will have ability to time travel only to a maximum of one day in the past so it you, you cannot go beyond that uh, but any other edition after that will have a ability to go to up, up until 90 days in the past for each table uh, 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 but uh, there is a uh, 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 slight catch over here let's say for example uh but even if you are on the highest edition and license of a snowflake by default it will keep all the retention for all the tables by default to one day you will have the ability to change it to 90 days uh, but by default all the tables will have storage for only one day and this can be tested uh, you can just do a table command uh let me select the right schema yeah so i'm just uh trying to get the tables uh related to, with the name customers and here we can see of all the features there's a feature called retention time and whatever the number that it specifies here it refers to the number of days that this table can be restored back to so currently we are on a, a, a higher edition uh, so we have the ability to change this to one uh, more than uh, one up until 90 uh, and uh, we can do that uh, uh, simply by altering the table properties so we will just let's say if i'm interested in setting one of these tables uh, customer tables to 10 days of restoration i can just uh, click this and run this once again and i can see the first table has changed to 10 days so this can be retained up until 10 days once it has been dropped or made any any changes so this is one thing and uh, uh, we can also set this here to zero so that manually uh, uh, logically it means that, that that table cannot be restored uh, uh, in, in, once it has been made any mistakes or errors right so you may ha have a question now hey, hey we have the ability to store it up until 90 days 
the why should not we store all the tables by default to 90 days if you have that capability the reason for that is so uh, it will add up additional storage right so your table has once it has been dropped or recreated your old table has to be stored for 90 days that means it will take a little bit of storage so whatever the storage additionally that you take consume on snowflake you'll have to pay for it right so because of that reason uh, uh, normally uh, uh, whenever we want to use uh, 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 retention or time travel feature keep in mind that higher it uh, more number of tables that were retained for higher longer time then it will cost to higher memory usage and higher cost so that is uh, uh, now let's move to the fail safe uh, uh, ability and uh, there are ways that you can track what is the uh, costs that were happening because of the only retention uh, uh, thing, but I'll not, I'll not go uh, into that at the moment. Uh, so now failsafe is a, a third level of security, as I was previously mentioning. Uh, your first, you have data here. In the worst case, if you miss data here, you will go to retention uh, storage and you can use a time travel feature to get the retention data. Now, even if you miss that there, let's say, for example, uh, your data is retained for 10 days, but you miss those 10 days time travel at a time period and your data has left even the retention storage. In that case, the data will enter into something called as fail safe. And uh, uh, there are a couple of quick, uh, let me actually do this. Yes, so, so that is the last and final stage of data protection. Uh, 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 and fail safe, so it normally current storage, retention storage and fail safe. Fail safe will normally be for off the period only seven days. So by default, any table that crosses retention storage, from then on, it will take uh, store the data in fail safe for about seven days. And after seven days, the data will be permanently deleted and there is no way you can retrieve it. Um, and there are fail safe is slightly different than what we explored so far in the time, tra time travel feature. So in time travel, we were able to write simple code and get back the data. But failsafe is not like that. You, we cannot interact with the failsafe storage by ourselves using the interface. Uh, so, uh, it will uh, uh, normally, if you have to retrieve any data from failsafe, uh, it is not in our control. We have to contact the Snowflake support team uh, and give them the details of our account and the table that we want to retrieve. Uh, and within the seven days uh, uh, of it has been moved to Snowf uh, failsafe, then they will be able to retrieve the data. But uh, 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 we cannot do it ourselves. So it's it's the last stage of data protection that we, we have. And obviously, uh, since a failsafe also takes up additional amount of storage, it will also add to additional cost. So all this uh, cost can be tracked so let me uh, so currently if i go to currently i'm an account admin uh, so whenever on any account if you go into this account admin role you can just go to here account and uh, it will show you all the stats related to your account usage and if i go to your storage use uh, here is my total storage used in the last few days and there is something called as fail safe if i click on fail safe and i can see for the last few days what is the amount of uh, data that was used on each of these uh, 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 tables in the fail set. So based on this, I'll be charged. So these are the three levels of data protections that we have in Snowflake if at all something went wrong with the data and we want to retrieve it.